I've set part of the day aside to do some repairs around the library and uh, also do a short book talk uh, from poetry by a guy out of Newfoundland, Canada. Right now I'm patching up a bird hole in the eave. You can see all the bird poop. I'll just uh, put a little patch up, cut it to fit. There. It doesn't look very good, but I'll get some brown paint painted over, I suppose. The author of the poetry book, his name is Joel Hines, and I read a novel of his called Down to the Dirt a few years ago. And I ordered the, this, was this book called Razor Days because I thought it was a novel, and then it came in, I found out it was poetry. I was disappointed. I'm trying to hang this coaxial cable, but there's an old broken insulator here. I figured I could probably use that. I got the glass piece out, but it's still too slack, so I'm just going to use these attachment pieces to just nail it in. There, you know how to do it. Uh, Joel Hines' novel was about a teenager who was just kind of a... He didn't know what he wanted to do with life. Uh, he had a bad family and he drank a lot and just did a lot of drugs there in rural Newfoundland. And it was a really... Down to the Dirt was a very good title because that's what it was. It was just really down to the dirt and the bone of uh, a tough life in a rural area with no money and uh, no jobs. And a kid who wasn't interested in school was just having a lot of trouble. So we have some rust spots and I was going to grind them down and then use some spray paint to cover them up. You know, one thing about poetry that I dislike is that I really have to work at it. I don't always know the rules. Um, I don't know what the story is behind a poem and I can't read between the lines to get what's going on. So oftentimes I say that poetry's best genre is uh, performance art, spoken word. Uh, you know, one thing about poetry, too, is is uh, so often, at least the stuff that I read nowadays, is autobiographical. And uh, the content of the novel and the poems by Heinz really kind of match together with their kind of grimness, really. So, let's run it down. You got drunks, rotten tattoos, I made a list. Uh, you really, people who are too poor for a reliable vehicle and they're often too drunk to drive anyway. Uh, absentee fathers, uh, struggling to write while sitting down with a pot of tea and sharpened pencils. Uh, run down rural homes that need a lot of work but never get it. Uh, love for BMW motorcycles and uh, more rotten tattoos and uh, drunks pontificating in bars. So probably none of this actually sells the book for you, huh? I mean, there's a lot of really depressing stuff, but uh, it, it's, it's realistic in a lot of ways in that there's hope ahead of it. And a lot of the poems, um, kind of a realistic look, at tough life. And of course, uh, you know, it's fairly well written. Now, of course, me saying that uh, poetry is well written, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. Now, I don't know bupkis about poetry. But I liked it. So, well, I had to grow into it. Uh, of course, when you're getting critical about poetry, I mean, who's right and who's wrong? I mean, there's plenty of bad poetry that sold lots of copies. Taking forever. I think there's an analogy in here about putting in effort and getting something out of it. That was kind of the original idea, but I didn't want this much effort with this stupid bench. I just gave this a second coat of paint, but it's pretty much finished. Finally. So here's a couple of poems. Uh, keep in mind there's plenty of cursing, so turn the volume down or send the kids out of the room. This one's called I Won't Go Into Detail. My little sister brought the police to my house. Nothing new for this part of town, but there are two policemen out there now staying like humans in my living room. They, the police, have just come from the apartment my folks rent in town. 
to be closer to the situation with my sister, where they forced the door in because they were led to believe she might be in there on the floor, bleeding to death, on account of the so-called boyfriend. I won't go into detail. It's a messy affair of hidden cameras, psychic hysteria, sleep deprivation, sawn off crack barrels, bugged telephones, and bogus birth dates. My folks are away down south, reprieve from the situation with my sister. And now, to maybe spare my father another premature gray, because I'm the black sheep of the youth record, stretching from here to Gorman's Hill, I might go and fix their door before they get back to the island. Maybe I should go over there and clean the place out, right down to the toilet paper on the roll, spray paint something lewd and cryptic on their walls, and take a big, steaming, dirty, big, steaming shit in the middle of their living room floor. I have my excuses, I suppose. My youth jammed into garbage bags and slung out over the doorstep, told to go rob gas stations, to sell dope, to suck old men's cocks, all because I brought the law dog to the door again. Still, I can't recall them ever swinging around with their battering ram on my account. The boy's in black out there right now in my living room. I slick my way close to the warm little bag of T3s on the kitchen counter. The old-timer of the two hasn't yet taken his hand from the butt of his gun, and the younger pup picks a piece of lint from his body armor while my sister cries wretched madhouse tears. There's another one called More Scar Than Spider. Two weeks, 200 miles offshore. I'm 14 pounds lighter by the time we land in Cape Royal. Spew up rancid baking grease the moment I hit the safety of the wharf. The sky won't stop tumbling, rolling, sinking. Cook tells me to focus on the harbor, the swell out there, to avoid looking at dry land until it passes. Land sick, he shouts to the crew. I'm mocked and jeered. I want to smack that dirty old cunt so bad. Collect half my pay and hire it to my new girlfriend's place. I'm already waiting in her room with a bottle of lotion when she gets home from school. Within minutes, her mother catches her straddling me, my hand tucked down the back of her jeans. But I've got more money than I've ever had in my life, and we both laugh at her mother. We hit the road for St. John's, Friday evening, and there's a Matote motel out there somewhere, and a friend's spare room, and Chess's french fries, and dirty bars where no one knows anything about anything at all, and the Black Rose Tattoo Shop. My mind is bent on a baby scallop shell with the words, Never Again, wrapped around it in an old school scroll. The fat man has nothing of the sort, and his folders are on his walls. He's never seen a scallop. I tell him the best raw, fresh from the shell, where the muscle still has a little twitch left in it. He draws up a foolish, crude mockery of my last two weeks of misery and torture. It's cartoonish and hard to trust, so I decide on a nickel-sized black widow spider. I want to bang it into the soft spot between my thumb and index finger, but with the moment he has laid the stencil down, my girlfriend shakes her head ever so faintly. I know it's a shitty idea, so I flip my hand and let him stamp it on the underside of my wrist. This one takes only 20 minutes, but I cannot understand the pain. Like someone clamping down your hand while a cat breaks its claws across the part of the rest stupid people try to slit. After the first few minutes, my girl splits from the bar upstairs to wait it out. She has not need to see how tough I'm not. Off to the captain's quarters then, for a room and a decent feed and all the other fine things you miss at sea. A good six months to heal, and it turns out to be more scar than spider, but it's forgivable since he shined up old Scully's gold tooth for free. So you got this guy, he's, he's at the sea for two weeks. He can't handle it, comes back, blows all his money, gets a tattoo. Old Scully is his old tattoo that he has polished up for him. But, uh, you know, if you're like me, maybe it takes one or two reads to kind of get everything that's going on in there. But Straight Razor Days by Joel Thomas Hines, and that's supposed to read.